Hello, welcome to the Shipper Update. I'm Anthony Smith, Chief Economist here at Freight Waves, and it's Monday, so that means we have to talk about the upcoming releases for this week. And this week is going to be really loaded up on the latter half with a lot of big releases, but throughout the week, there's going to be a lot of insights to gleam from the consumer conditions, namely from jobs and employment. When looking at the jobs market, it's really important now and it's very crucial because it's one of the last consumer conditions that's really continuing to really prop up some st stability for consumer demand. We're looking at housing, construction, we're looking at durable goods, we're looking at services, non-durable goods. All these things is going to have to happen from those cons U.S. consumers. And they can only make these purchases if they are gainfully employed and feeling confident about the economic outlook. We've seen economic uh, outlook really kind of wane from some of them. When you look at some of the survey data, like the Consumer Confidence Index or Consumer Sentiment, really not showing the strongest of numbers, the Housing uh, Sentiment uh, Purchase, Home Purchasing Sentiment Index from Fannie Mae. So there are all certain uh, indices that are showing that consumers aren't feeling as confident. but actually have been showing otherwise so far. Right now, we're getting kicked off with our job openings number here. So looking at overall job openings to, for total non-farm in this chart right behind me, we're looking at that it's stay really hovering really near record levels, staying really near that 11 million mark or just above the 11 million mark. So look at that overall job openings number. We're going to be able to see how many options those consumers have. We're always talking about optionality from time to time here when it has to do with trucking or, or capacity. But when consumers have that optionality, truly be able to switch jobs, maybe take on a higher paying role, things like that, we also see in turn that quit rate grow up. Usually when consumers leave a job and they're quitting and taking these voluntary separations, that's a sign of confidence, a vote of confidence that they have within their own economic outlook for themselves. And typically when there's an economic downturn or consumers don't feel good about the economic outlook, they aren't going to be able to, or they're not going to elect to switch jobs. The other big thing is, is that um, a lot of these jobs are going to be because there is so much overwhelming demand for goods and services really starting to potentially build up as we get into some of the warmer months as well. As we see this build up uh, and some of the demand, that's really what has been propping up some of these job openings. If we start to see demand really start to diminish, we could also see some of these job openings diminish as well taking away from some of the optionality and potentially taking away from some of that confidence that might be the last stronghold that some of these consumers have. Going into our next chart here, this is job openings. We also have weekly initial jobs claims as well. Last week had a reading of 187,000 applicants. So if you're not familiar with this index, that might sound like a high number, 187,000 people in the U.S. applying for initial jobs claims benefits. But this is the lowest number that we've seen in over 40 years right now. So looking at this number, Number, there is a lot to take in. Firstly, we have to see what the number is going to be next week or this upcoming week to see if there's any kind of revisions, any kind of seasonality adjustments that's been going on, or if this is indeed the true number. Next, we have to really see what the continuing claims trend is going to look like. So I am anticipating this is going to bump up slightly uh, just because it is at an all-time record low, and typically that's not going to be met with another all-time record low unless there's just something kind of strange going on in the overall economy that we haven't taken note of yet, or there's just something kind of funny going on with some of the numbers right now. So looking at this number here, we're going to be expecting it to kind of moderate maybe to the 190s potentially. If we even see it in the 200s, I don't think that's too alarming. Typically, we would want to see this number around 200 to 200. 40 on the higher end. If it starts getting close to the 300,000 mark, that's where we really have to have some raise for concerns. But as I mentioned, those continued claims, those individuals that are not just filing for unemployment benefits the first time, but continuing to apply again and again is also going to be the trend that we watch here. But when we're looking at consumers applying for unemployment and we're seeing it at such a low rate, that's going to bring us to another index, and that's going to be the unemployment rate that we're going to talk to a little bit, a little bit later on here. But getting into our next chart, we're going to talk about it right, um, right here, and that's going to be 3.8 percent. That was the last update for the unemployment rate number. Before the pandemic, we saw this number dip down to 3.5 percent. This is going to be one that you have to kind of peel back and see what's going on because we can have a lower unemployment rate number, but the other big thing that we have to take into account is what the participation rate is. So just because you have a lower partic a lower unemployment rate doesn't mean that there's actually more folks working. So this is going to be the other big trend to watch closely as well because when we look at the participation rate, it is still below the pre-pandemic number, but that is gradually climbing up. There are, of course, some other um, trends that have happened throughout the pandemic 
dynamics such as baby boomers like myself, uh, in my current generation, maybe electing to just retire a little bit early. But right now, that's going to be one of the trends that we have to kind of continue to watch slowly but surely as these consumer conditions for the job markets continue to develop. This is only some of the upcoming releases for this week, but right now, we're going to toss it back over to Kaylee Nix.